the past, Clinton County, Missouri was the western edge of the United States. Situated between two emerging cities, Kansas City and St. Joseph, Clinton County benefited from their growth. The Pony Express, the Gold Rush, and Western Migration brought people through the county, but the population that settled here put it on the map. Plattsburgh became the beef capital of the world. Lathrop was a major supplier of mules for the Boer Wars and World War I. Five railroads crisscrossed the county, and the nation's first north-south highway ran through Cameron, Plattsburgh, and Trimble on its way to Kansas City. Clinton County was home to David Rice Atchison, president for a day, James Harvey Birch, Missouri Supreme Court judge, Willis J. Wynn, president of the Cleveland Federal Reserve, and James Marshall, early leader of the Manhattan Project. Here are more family histories of Clinton County. Thanksgiving 1905, Raleigh Shaver, better known as Santa Claus Shaver, is getting ready for his annual visit delivering presents to the 65 schools in Clinton County for Christmas. After months of preparation and help from numerous friends and family, it would take the entire month to deliver all the presents on unpaved roads and heavy snow, sometimes a sled and a team of mules were often used. Who was Santa Claus Shaver? He was my cousin, the grandson of Washington Shaver, a Missouri pioneer and Eliza Lincoln, cousin of President Abraham Lincoln. See, Raleigh's father, Albert, was born near Liberty, and when Albert was eight years old, his dad, Washington, died. And at that time, Albert's uncle, Berryman, moved from Virginia to Missouri to oversee his niece and nephews. See, Berryman eventually owned a lot of land in Clinton County, and he also eventually became a judge for the county. Albert eventually moved to Clinton County and was a farmer his entire life. And in 1870, he married uh, Mary Morgan. Raleigh's mother, Mary, was the daughter of Raleigh S. Morgan and Amanda Trimble. The Morgans migrated from Kentucky to Clinton County in 1857. Albert and Mary had been married only nine years when Albert unexpectedly died. And at that time, a pregnant Mary and her children moved in with her parents. Two weeks later, Mary had a son named Washington, and he died 10 months later. That had to be one of the worst years of their lives. Raleigh's mother never remarried, and Raleigh and his sister lived with her and his grandparents until adulthood. So Raleigh was educated at public schools and, and Plattsburgh College. After, he took, after that, he took to farming, and, and in 1900, he married Lena Porter, daughter of A.K. Porter and Nancy Trice. They were also natives of Kentucky. Now, Lena's dad taught school for 10 years and eventually became superintendent of the Plattsburgh schools. The newlyweds built their home in 1902 on 500 South Main Street, and that house still stands today. And it's only a few blocks from his childhood home on Birch. It wasn't long until Raleigh became one of the more successful farmers and stockmen of the county, owning over 1,400 acres. His generosity was more than just being Santa. He helped young men and women through college, assisted many in business, and some received money from an anonymous donor. See, Raleigh and Lena took Raleigh's cousin, K. 
Carrie B. Shaver after her guardian passed away. That's because her mother passed when she was nine months old. And two years later, her dad died. He was killed by a train. So Raleigh treated her like his own daughter, uh, sending her to college and even hosting a wedding at his home. And one might question, why did he do all this? Well, since he didn't have any children of their own, he thought it foolish to hoard more than he needed or to waste it on extravagance. He had a share the wealth philosophy, something he learned from Grandpa Morgan. After over 30 years of being Santa, he delivered over $40,000 worth of gifts. And in today's dollar, that would be equivalent to 500,000. At one time, he told the La Plata paper that when my health was poor from age 18 to 26, I one year watched from the couch as kids took their Christmas presents from the tree and some things they wanted and some things they didn't. And these poor kids being disappointed stirred me and greatly made me make up my mind that when I got healthy, or if, if I got healthy, that I would want to see that these kids got something they wanted for Christmas. So I set out determined to have enough money to carry out my Christmas resolution. In the beginning, children wouldn't pick toys, but would pick gloves, hats, coats, or sweaters. And he soon realized that the kids' parents were telling them to pick something they needed, not what they wanted. So soon after that, he discontinued the clothes so the kids could pick the gifts they wanted. He said youngsters all over Clinton County would say, I've seen Santa Claus. I've talked to him. He's not a fat, roly-poly old fella, nor does he have a long, white, bushy whiskers. He's a long, very thin, smooth-faced man, and he's a farmer. 